We're going to change the tire on this aluminum wheel. It's a Dunlop Elite 3 tire. It's 250 wide. It's on a Harley chopper rim. That's fairly stiff, low profile tire. And we're going to use our classic model tire changer. The maximum bead brake clearance for the classic model is a 250 wide. What you would do is raise the back post up from your base setting. And the base setting on the classic model changer will work from anything from a 110 width front to a 190 rear. Over a 190 rear, you'd have to raise the post from its 5 to 6 inch drop out on the base setting all the way up to flush on the bottom. Reset your four set screws. And you can see the marks from the previous settings. So what I'll do is I move the rear block to the peg hole with the yellow dot, let the air out of the tire, lay the wheel on top of the blocks, break the bead with the non-marring wedge bead breaker tee. Thoroughly break the bead all the way around on both sides, then you'll be ready to lock the wheel in. Now the blocks don't need to be symmetrical. In fact, on this wheel, they're not going to be. See, I've got two holes here and one here and here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-compress the tire. I can't get the extra hand clamps in this wheel. It's, it's too stiff and there's not enough room. So I'm going to use a spoon bar and three wood blocks instead of the extra hand clamps. So I'll make some space for each block. And if I position these blocks here over the polyethylene blocks on the bottom, I will uh, reference these blocks perfectly into three quadrants. And all we're doing is shimming the tire down to make it easier to handle for one person to get locked into the, the blocks. The rim clamp set could be used to uh, hold the wheel, but these blocks should work just fine. Now I'm going to flip the wheel over toward me. And that would uh, position those blocks in the pre-compressed area of the tire in a way that's a little bit easier to manage. I push the wheel into the two dog blocks, get it down in the flat portion of the cam, turn the cam, and lock the wheel. And pull those wood blocks out. Now use the spray lube to help get the tire off. I need to get that lube down into the drop center. Single end of the Mount D-mount bar is going to remove the tire. I always start and stop over this left frame arm for reference. Insert the bar, push it in just enough to keep the plastic in contact with the rim. I turn the bar engage the lobe on the bead seat area of the tire but I need to get the rest of this tire down in the drop center I can't just pry this over so what I'll do is I'll draw the bar up while I manipulate the tire and get the rest of it in the drop center and then all I have to do is lift this tire hold the tire keep your uh, bar if you have a rotor on here keep your bar up over the rotor Remove the first half. Generally you don't need to remove any rotors when you're using the mount D-mount bar. Always keep the non-mooring tip on the top edge of the rim. This is a really wide tire so it's going to be important that the back side be dragged up for its clearance. So i got to get the back side up, bend the top of the tire, hook the lobe on the bottom, set it down just like I do with every other tire change. Hold the tire with your left hand, pull the bar, and remove the second half. You want to make sure that uh, your wheel's clean, no sand, no grit. Wipe off the old tire lube. By using a paste lube, we don't introduce much moisture into the internal area of the tire, so your pressures will stay pretty consistent and not expand a lot when you get hot. You introduce a lot of water in there, your pressures are going to change. So, in order to prop the rim, I use the tire paste lube, wipe it in the drop center area specifically, 
the Ansha right up to the bead seat area, all the way around the top and bottom. I'm going to get that good and slick. It's going to let the tire roll into the drop center without friction, and when you inflate it, it'll help the tire catch and seat. On the tire, the prep I do is putting the lube on the inside of the top, the inside edge, and the inside edge of the bottom. I'll also put tire paste lube on the face of the rim to help me push the tire the first half on. So I'll push the first half on. If your rim slips, not a problem, you didn't damage it, just push the cam and notch tighter like I just did. Two prong end of the bar, mouth the tire, insert it in over that frame arm like we discussed. This tire I'm going to use a yellow thing tool to help the bead from creeping. Pre-install as much of the tire as you can back to about 3 o'clock. Keep the tire in the drop center with your left hand. Position your body to push the bar with your left hip and pull the handle with your right hand. The only hand I have on the bar is my right hand on the end of the handle. And you can see the tire creeping into the drop center because we lubed it and you can see the tire pulling over the face of the rim with little friction because we have lube on the inside. To use the yellow thing, get it out correctly, you have to relieve the tire and then twist the yellow thing out. 